Hey, Kevin, thank you so much for joining me. No problem. Thanks for having me. Of course, and super cool to talk to you. So we've never met in person, but I'm out here in Bakersfield, your hometown. You're out there in Charlotte. My first question, of course, goes to just you and your family. How has it been in the Harvick household during this time? It's been different, obviously, uh, having one in school and, and a two-year-old running around the house wanting to do everything that the seven-year-old brother is doing. Uh, it's definitely been a uh, culture shock to everybody in the house, but uh, Delana has become the teacher. I've become head of entertainment, and we've uh, got through it well. We've uh, had a couple of uh, backyard campouts. We've had, um, you know, grilling expeditions of trying new things, uh, you know, to cook and eat and sit at the table and do all kinds of normal things. So it's been um, really good for us to kind of slow down and, you know, think about the things, the little things that you kind of take for granted on, on a weekly basis and daily basis as, as we go and run around the country and race cars for a living. So it's, um, it's definitely been good for us to kind of get back down to earth and, and do those little things you know, that we've really never done. If you just take a minute to scroll down your social media, it looks like you guys have the funnest household of this whole pandemic. <laughs> and your kids are so cute. So it's Keelan and Piper, but I, I just want to say or ask you, how did you get the fun job of being in charge of entertainment? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my, um, my son, obviously, we spend a lot of time together, as, as everybody knows, but um, he, he loves basketball, so I've been uh, the, the basketball coach of all the virtual basketball camps. Um, you know, iRacing has become, you know, very much a part of what we have done through this pandemic and, and been very good for our sport of, of NASCAR and, and the things that, that uh, we've been able to do and, and put on TV it has been uh, kind of a blessing in disguise, you know, through through a time when nobody really had much to to watch on television, and so you know, for Keelan and I, that's that's been a lot of fun to kind of you know learn together because I I didn't know anything about it, and, and uh, so wow. just turning the computer on was was a lot for me. So we we've learned together and had a lot of fun with that. But um, I definitely have the cool job of of uh, being head of entertainment. I've, I've sat through a few school sessions, and and they can become challenging to, to say the least. I've heard that from many parents and feel for everybody trying to deal with that. But of course you brought up the, the virtual racing and I was just going to ask you that because that's such a cool thing and seeing your setup, that simulator one looks like fun, <laughs> but two just yeah. in general, you mentioned it is that this is kind of growing your sport and you're kind of getting a whole new fan base and audience. So how has that been for you? And, and I mean, how exciting is that to know that maybe coming out of this, not only did you guys kind of introduce something fun, but grew the, the NASCAR fan base. Yeah, so for, for, for me, it's, it's really been a little bit of an eye-opener because I was definitely of, of the opinion that you don't need to be sitting in front of the computer all day trying to, um, you know, to, to race something. And, and uh, that stereotype that I put on, on that, that particular group of, of racers um, that I've learned that, that they are uh, was probably unfair just because I'd never done that before. And, you know, in the end, we talk about all the same things. How do we go faster? How do we be more competitive? Um, and it's a group of people that just race a different form of, of, of racing. And, you know, so, you know, it's, it's, it's much different than, than what I do. Um, you know, a lot of it has to do with your eyes and mine aren't very good. Uh, it's not, not so much of a, a feel thing like it is on, on our, in my regular job, but it's been, it's been uh, very refreshing to do something that is challenging and way outside of my comfort zone and learn about a new group of people, have a new network of people, brought uh, I think I think the first you know pretty much every race you got 250,000 fans that have never watched a NASCAR race and and uh you know of that demographic that that is much younger and you know the the, the fans that we're searching for so hopefully for all of us this has been a great lesson of, of how to cross over uh in into you know a different racing world and, and bring those fans over on Sunday and hopefully our fans you know stay over and watch what has been some great racing uh, you know, in the iRacing world, you know, during the week. So it's, um, it's, it's a lot of fun and, and, and it's been a, a big challenge. But, you know, I think as we go back to racing here in a couple of weeks in Darlington, um, you know, you have that same opportunity to, to go out and, and race in front of a lot of people that are starving to, to watch something that's not on Netflix or a rerun of something else that you watched 30 years ago. So it's, it's definitely going to be a great opportunity to, uh, you know, to get back on the racetrack in some pretty extreme conditions but you know i think as 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 you look at everything i think it's a it's it's in the end it's a great opportunity to expose our sport to new fans of course and and you touched there so 
I'm sure how you're so excited just the fact that you get back into your real sport and you get back to racing again coming up here, you know, on May 17th, just around the corner. So what has that been like just kind of waiting around to get back to it? I mean, especially you right now, you're at kind of the pinnacle there in the, in the standings. And I just want to know, how has that been to kind of have that success? It gets halted. And then now you're getting prepared to kind of keep that success moving again once you get back here. Yeah, so it's it's really strange, you know. Even even in the off season, you have some you know personal interaction with your team and and events and appearances, and to have no interaction with with personnel is is very strange because it kind of limits the conversation. So we actually had our first uh, team meeting on on Microsoft Teams last week, and and you know a lot of videos and a lot of things with the simulators and you know, our actual simulators that we use, uh, you know, to prepare for races not being being used and and so, you know, I think for, for me, I, I think it'll come back pretty quick once you get into the car. The thing that I've focused on the most is just conditioning. And I've had a lot of time on my hands. So um, I've done a lot of different things that, that um, you know, I hadn't done in the past and, and have been back on my go-kart uh, last week. And we'll be back on there, you know, four or five times before we get back in the car. Just trying to, you know, make sure that your arms and neck and everything are, are beat up enough to, to make sure that you're ready for what is going to be a lot of racing, you know, as we race Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, um, you know, you rotate that back and forth to hundreds or actually thousands of miles. It's going to be, you know, the, the most important thing is going to be recovery. So going in, you just need to be in, in, you know, as good a shape as you've ever been in just so that you can spend the time in between races recovering uh, to be ready for the next one. Recently, you, you re-signed a two-year extension with your racing team. So what did that just mean to you to kind of keep this going? And obviously, again, it goes without saying you've had a lot of success since 2014, but especially this season as well and coming off of last year, a really strong year. So why was that important to kind of sign through 2023? Yeah, you know, I think it checked a lot of boxes. And, and Delaney and I just kind of sat down and talked about, you know, where, where our kids were and where we were as people. And uh, we cut out the TV and radio stuff just to, to, uh, to try to, you know, take back a little bit of time. Uh, but we're planners, you know, we, we like to have a, a plan of, of how things are going to go and, and where you're going. Uh, for me, I've got a team that I've asked for my whole career uh, with people around you that, that are committed to you and an organization that's committed to you to, to win races and, and give you everything that you need with uh, Tony Stewart and Gene Haas. So um, it'd be, in the end, it would have just not been the right thing to do to walk away from that and jump in the TV booth when you've worked your whole career to get a group of people and an organization in a situation like this, um, you know, I have, I have, you know, more fun being competitive and, and around those groups of guys and being successful on the racetrack than, than I probably would uh, in, in the TV booth. And, and, you know, if you go into the booth, once you, once Joe Girardi is a good friend of mine and he said, once you take that Jersey off, you can't put it back on. So, you know, it, it would be difficult to surround yourself with, you know, the type of people that, that I have now and the situation that I have now. And, and we just elected to, to go forward a couple more years and then evaluate after that. Yeah. And so after all this time of you kind of being in your sport, how good does it feel? Again, you're at the top with the points right now in the standings, but how good does that feel to keep kind of finding that success? Well, you know, the thing that I've learned over the years is it's all about people, no matter what you do, you know, and in the end, um, no matter what your job is, you have to, you have to have people around you that they care about what they do and are good at what they do. And, you know, for, for me, it's, it's, it's something that I've been fortunate to experience a lot of success when a lot of cool races, but coming to Stuart Haas racing and being around a lot of guys that hadn't experienced all that success, I almost get uh, more uh, satisfaction out of watching those guys and, and celebrating with those guys and, and being able to, um, you know, share that success with them. And Keelan has a lot to do with that as well. You know, I think being able to share those moments, those high moments and the low moments of yeah. why you won or why you lost and, and his, uh, you know, um, attention to what's going on and how into racing and being a part of what I do, he is, is, is a lot of fun. And now Piper, loves going to the racetrack. She got to go to the racetrack more at the end of last year. And, and so it's, it's back to becoming a family event for us. You know, we can travel together and go to the racetrack. And now obviously everything's changed with the current situation. But, you know, I think as, as we go forward, we can all do this together. And that's what NASCAR is. It's a, it's a family, family sport. And, and as a competitor, I'm just lucky that I can take all my, all my family to, to my job and, and be able to share the, the, the success and the failures with them. Yeah. And again, I, I mentioned this because I loved watching all your stuff on social media, a lot of the cute videos. 
And it must be fun to be a kid growing up with you as their dad. Just, I can only imagine how many different motorsports you guys have at home. So what sports do you think in terms of racing are your kiddos going to get into or what are they showing signs of this at this age? Yeah, well, Piper just likes to do whatever her brother does. <laughs> so, you know, she just, she, she loves to be around and, and running around with, with him. Um, Keelan is, is into basketball. Um, you know, he, he loves to ride his, his go-kart and, and I race and we play golf and, and, you know, he's not much on, on baseball. Um, he loves football, but his parents are going to put the, put the hammer down on that one to, to not play football, uh, just because. So, you know, I think between those three things, th those are things that I enjoy to do and, and we can, and we can do all those things together. So it's, uh, but it could change, you know, with the wind, you, you yeah. never know what, what tomorrow brings as, as, um, you know, he's, he's seven. So, uh, what he likes could change tomorrow. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. And just, uh, wanted to ask you about social media. I don't know if you've gotten more active on it during this time, cause you've had a little more time on your hands and you're kind of just showing people what's going on at home, but how have you been able to use social media as a tool, not only for your fan base, but just, you know, just to kind of get your message out there for your sport as well. Yeah. So I've, we've definitely used it more. We've definitely changed our, our, our trends of, of, what we're what we're doing on social media how much we're using it how much interaction we have just because you know there's just um you know there's a need and a responsibility to our sport and our sponsors and our team um and you know it's just letting letting your guard down during a time like this is okay yeah. and you know kind of poking fun at yourself and, and being okay with people making fun of things that you're doing or haircuts that you get, I was get gonna say the haircut with the um, leaf whatever, what, whatever it is <laughs> Um, you know, this is just, you know, we're real people and, you know, we're fighting the same things that, that everybody else is. And that's, you know, not being able to go many places, not being able to go get a haircut, not being able to, you know, take your kids to the park or school or whatever, whatever it may be. We're, we're fighting the same things. and People need to see that because we do have a responsibility to, um, you know, to help, you know, people's uh, attitudes towards things and, and, you know, how they feel and the things that they do. That they do. And, and social media is a great way to, to bring a smile to people's face, to people's faces um, with silly things that we're doing. Yeah, no, we all love it. We all need it for sure. And of course, I can't bring you in here and not ask about Bakersfield. So you got a lot of love out here in your hometown. And I just wonder during this time, it kind of brings, you know, a pause to everyone. And as you mentioned, your life kind of slows down. Have you been able to take a minute and just kind of reflect on where your career has gone from the kid that was racing. I think you started out with go-karts, right? Oh yeah, um, you're in Bakersfield that's right. Right there to where you are today. Yeah, you know, so Bakersfield is a racing town. You could pluck Bakersfield right out of California and put it right in North Carolina and it would fit right in here just because of, you know, how many racers there are there. But for, for me, I was very fortunate to, you know, have a lot of support in town and still have a lot of support in town from, you know, a lot of people that watch me race now, but a lot of the same people that, that helped me get my career started and, and keep it moving in, into the direction that it, that it is today. So I uh, still have a lot of interaction with, with a lot of people from, from town there. Um, you know, my mom's mom and sister and everybody still, still lives there. So it's, it's definitely, um, you know, a big part of, of my racing uh, background and the things that I was able to do there. And, and that still exists in, in town today, you know, for all the young racers and, and um, motorcycle riders and all the people that, that are in town. I mean, there's anything you want to race is still there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And outside of people, cause that's always the go-to answer. What do you miss the most about Bakersfield? Oh man. You know, I think, um, you know, I, I, as, as you grow up, you know, you, you kind of become, um, a creature of habit. And I think for me is, you know, all those childhood little fast food joints and restaurants and Mexican restaurants, the Mexican food is a little bit different here, uh, than it is on, on the West coast. So I definitely, I definitely missed all those, all those, uh, great Mexican restaurants that we have there in town. Yeah. I was going to, I was going to ask you that exactly. Who has better Mexican food? Cause I saw that on one of your bios, you, that's your favorite kind of food. And I would say Bakersfield's got pretty good Mexican food. That's right. Yeah. You know, uh, El Sombrero and, and I, you know, grew up in oil del. So La Tapatia was, and it's redone. I just went there a couple, I guess it's been a couple months ago now, but, um, La Tapatia is all redone. So I, I enjoy La Cabana, El Sombrero, La Tapatia. Um, I could probably just make a list. I, if you, you just tell me somewhere that, um, you know, has Mexican food and I've probably been there. <laughs> nice. Well, Kevin, if you have a message for, you know, all of Kern County out here, 
who, I, like I said, they, they support the heck out of you over here. But what would be your message for them during this time? Because obviously it goes without saying it's been a tough time for a lot of different people. What would you say to yeah. them? Yeah, you know, I, I think for, for me is, is just hang tough. You know, I think as, as we go through these times, um, you know, the thing that we have tried to do is just try to take the positives out of something. Um, create yourself, uh, you know, some, some situations that are, that are different than what you've done before because you have the time to do them. So, you know, create some new habits for yourself and, and create some new goals and, and try to take this time and turn it into a positive because there's really nothing that you can change about it. So take, take yourself into your own hands. There's nobody that cares more about you than you. So, um, you know, take that into your own hands and, and just try to take as many positives from it as you can. Yeah, and my, my last question to ask you just about all of this is, of course, as you know, a lot of athletes from the range, from at the professional ranks all the way down to amateur and high school, you know, a lot of people have seen not only their seasons come to an end, but some of them, their sports careers without, you know, without any kind of, I guess, preparation to get themselves mentally prepared for that. So I've been asking a lot of athletes this, and I'm just curious at your level what you think about it. With racing just around the corner for you and you getting back in the car and kind of that feel again, do you think it's going to be a little different getting back to sports after this pause? I would hope we see a lot more smiles. You know, I, I think a lot of us do uh, take that for granted just because it's what we've done for so long. And, and when you have the rug yanked out from underneath you and it's not there, uh, tomorrow or there's not another tomorrow there's not another chance it makes you it makes you want to you know I know I have another opportunity to go out and, and take all those sights sounds and smells uh, in you won't get that interaction with people uh, like like you want to but you know I think being in that race car is where I've always wanted to be my whole life and, and knowing that I get to get back in there and and, and um, perform and do the things that I love to do in a time like this is, is pretty special so I think I think you're definitely going to see you know, a different attitude. And if you don't, there's something wrong with those people who, who have a bad attitude toward what they're doing. Yeah, for sure. No doubt about it. Well, thank you so very much for the time. I appreciate it. And I, I want to throw in one fun question. I've always said this. If you were actually the first uh, NASCAR driver I've ever been able to interview. So thank you for that. But I've always been curious when you're driving the normal streets, are you going speed limit? Or are you always, <laughs> are you always pushing the pedal? <laughs> I'm usually about 10 miles an hour, seven to 10 miles an hour of the speed limit on cruise control. Okay. So here's the one thing I can tell you about people driving on the street. And you're probably included in this because I know my wife is too. You guys are crazy. <laughs> you guys are work. You got, I feel, I feel more uncomfortable driving around the street than I do in my race car. That is for sure. So get off your phones, get off your phones, <laughs> quit looking around, pay attention to what you're doing. Right. I've always wanted to know that. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, we're all, there's some speedsters out here in Bakersfield. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The surface street driving here is a little, I was like, this feels a little like a raceway sometimes. <laughs> there's nothing that puts all that into perspective more than hitting something. So when you want to know what it's like, when you, when, when you really know what it's like to be going too fast, you've hit something. So that'll put it into perspective for you. There you go. Well, now, now I know my question I've long been wanting to be answered is been answered. So I appreciate it. There you that. go. <laughs> and Kevin, like I said, thank you so much. Such a pleasure to meet you and wish you and your family the best. And uh, good luck to you once you get back out there racing. And hopefully we'll get to see you during this playoff run. All right. Stay safe. And thanks for having me. Thanks so much, Kevin. Take care.